the purpose of this video is to show you how to make a relative frequency histogram by hand. A relative frequency histogram is the graph of a relative frequency distribution table. Over here on the right we've got a relative frequency distribution for the GPS device price data and we made this relative frequency distribution from our expanded frequency distribution table. So what we did just take this column, the classes column, and the relative frequency column and pair them together to make a table. That's your relative frequency distribution. Remember that the relative frequency of each class is just the percentage of the data that falls in that particular class. Um, so the formula for that is class frequency divided by sample size. This gives you the, the percent as a decimal. Um, you can see that, for example, in the first class we had a frequency of 5. There were 30 total measurements in the sample, so the relative frequency or the percentage frequency of that class is 5 divided by 30, the frequency of the class divided by the sample size, or 17 percent. So what we're saying here is hey, 17% of the GPS device prices belong to this first class. Or we're saying 17% of the devices in the sample are priced between and including $59 and $114. So again, to make the relative frequency distribution, you have to, well, find relative frequencies for each one of your classes using this formula. And then you just simply make a table out of the classes column and the relative frequency column. Okay, so then to graph that table, the relative frequency distribution table, we graph that as a relative frequency histogram. Okay, just a another bar chart. So, and the relative frequency histogram has the same shape and same horizontal scale as the, the frequency histogram only difference is the vertical scaling will be relative frequencies now this time percentages not frequencies okay so uh, when you go to construct your uh, relative frequency histogram uh, you do a lot of the same steps that you did uh, when it comes to finding your um, when it comes to graphing your histogram so step one locate and label your class midpoints along your x-axis so dig out your midpoints for this example here here they are Make sure your midpoints are equally spaced so that your graph looks uniform and accurate. Okay, so that's the location of all our class midpoints. In step two, we're going to make tick marks at the midpoint between each pair of consecutive midpoints. So the, here's two consecutive midpoints. I'm going to just put a smaller tick mark between them. This will locate. This will be us locating the boundaries. The class boundaries are where the histogram bars will touch or where they will connect. Remember. Uh, histogram bars are centered about these class midpoints and they should connect at the boundaries. So now let's go ahead and do step three. Sketch a bar for each class. So the first class has a relative frequency of 17%. So we're going to sketch a bar whose height is 0.17. Uh, we need to probably scale our y-axis before we do that. Notice in the relative frequency table that 27% or 0.27 is the the largest relative frequency so that kind of clues us in on uh, maybe how to graph uh, maybe how to scale our uh, y our y axis so i'm just going to do like this uh, 
locate 5% here, 10% here. Okay, I guess I'll just go in units of 5. The relative frequency of that class which is 0.17, so above the above the midpoint, I'll find 0.17 and then I'll draw a bar that's centered at that midpoint. The relative frequency of the next class, the second class, 27%. So I'm going to center another bar around the next midpoint, and the height of that bar needs to be 0.27 or 27%. And the bar, again, needs to be centered about the, the class midpoint and second class, okay? Next relative frequency, 20%. And 17% again. So this is just, this graph type is just another way to visualize your data or visualize your your, ta your table, which summarizes your data. So make sure each one of your bars are centered at the midpoints. Make sure your bars connect at the boundaries. So don't forget to uh, label your X and Y axis. The Y axis will be labeled relative frequencies this time. And don't just label the X axis as midpoints. Put the, the variable that you measured in the data. So this is GPS device prices in dollars.